Okay, we are here for a new Guitar Day unboxing. You can tell it's a Fender. Uh, full disclosure, I've already taken it out of the outer carton just to save time, and nobody needs to see that. So, But as you can tell by the fact that I'm struggling with this, that it is still fully sealed. Not to tear it out too badly, but you get these staples in here, they're tricky. There we go. Now, what do we have? Uh, what we don't have is a good bag, but I don't think it was advertised to have one. But uh, Fender. The Allen wrench and warranty information. What do we have in here? We have a Fender Player Series. E3. I've been looking at these for a while. Clearly out of tune, but right out of the box, it uh, looks really nice. Really nice wood grain on this. Looks like a at least a two, if not a three piece body. Um, but I am very impressed. I always like to check the nut looks very nice out of the box. The frets are, I'm not sure how well you can tell on here, but they are extremely polished. That's, in terms of that, that's about as nice as you'll see on a new guitar. Um, frit ends, good but not great. They're not rough, but you can definitely feel that they're there. But uh, also it's early December in the mid-Atlantic as I filmed this, so it's a rather dry time of year. I'm looking up, it's 32% humidity in here, and that would have been the same as the area, so, um, but yeah, I'm eager to get it tuned up and plugged in, and we'll see what this thing can do. <laughs> some of the specs and the features. It has an alder body. It is at least two pieces, uh, might be three, but really nice grain. Uh, this is a Sienna sunburst finish. Uh, one thing that's really impressed me is this is a hardtail bridge in a Strat hardtail style. Uh, these blocks feel like something you would spend a substantial amount of money to upgrade to. They're very solid, they resonate very well, and I absolutely love them. Uh, the humbuckers are Player Series Alnico 2 humbuckers. Uh, I've seen some videos of uh, YouTubers not being that fond of them, but uh, I've also seen a lot that have loved them. I love them ever since I first heard them when the Player Series came out, and uh, Captain Anderton and Rob Chapman did a video, and I think they might have been in a Jaguar. I thought they sounded great. I've heard other channels play the uh, Dual Humbucker Telecaster. Thought they sounded great. Uh, to me, and there'll be a lot of sound samples later in the video, they do exactly what a humbucker should do in a Fender guitar. They give it some of that Gibson heft, but it's still clear, bright, and it uh, coil splits pretty well. Uh, some of the coil split sounds I love. I'm not a big fan of uh, coil split or tap guitar sounds typically, but there's some good ones in this one, which uh, brings me to the controls. Two switches here. So we have a switch that controls neck pickup, 
both pickups, bridge pickup, like standard. In the lead three, this splits the neck pickup into a single coil. This does nothing, and that splits the bridge pickup. For the sound samples, I try to remain consistent. Full humbucker, both humbuckers, bridge humbucker, neck single coil, and bridge single coil. So when you listen to the sound samples, I try to go in that order in all of them. Uh, otherwise, we have a, a standard Stratocaster style volume and tone control. Uh, they actually work pretty well, especially the volume. I demonstrate those later on too. We have an uh, SG type uh, input here. So uh, keep that in mind. I do, as someone who loves Telecasters, one of the things I like about Stratocasters over Telecasters is this location. Uh, so you, when you're sitting down, say you're just sitting on the couch, uh, watching TV, you know, playing around some, you have to sit a certain way with the Telecaster to keep the cable from bending and getting worn out prematurely, I found. Uh, so that won't be an issue here. Uh, turning to the neck, it is a maple neck, 22 medium jumbo frets. The polish job on these is tremendous. It's maybe the best I've ever seen for a new guitar. I've had it for about two weeks at the point I'm making this video, and I played it a good bit, and they still look fantastic. Uh, I would give the fret polish and finish, uh, in that regard, a 10 out of 10. The edges are very good. Not perfect, but very good. I'd give them a 7. Uh, again, Maple Neck. Love the gloss. I'm not sure how well it comes in on the video, but it has that great thing they've been doing in recent years. Gloss fretboard and then a more satin feeling back of the neck. A synthetic bone nut. Most people's favorite uh, tuning machines here. The push-in vintage style. Uh, some people might prefer locking, but for non-locking ones, a lot of people uh, favor these, and I love them too. Two string trees. People will fight on the internet about that, but uh, that's what it comes with. The traditional lead three decal, which is great. Uh, Stratocaster uh, type headstock. The whole body is sort of a slim down and cut down strat. These horns are a little smaller one thing the only thing that uh, i might actually call a flaw with this guitar is the cutaway here this is not cut as deep as a strat does or or a telecaster so if you're playing up here where my uh, little finger is that is where the body meets the neck so those last two frets are tricky to get to but uh, that's really the only what I would consider flaw with this guitar. Uh, flip it over really quick. Again, might be a few smudges because I've played it a good bit. Really nice wood grain for an alder body. Uh, F style plate there, skunk stripe. Then the again vintage F style machine heads made in Mexico. Uh, Modern C neck, a tremendous neck. Back over here. Uh, one of my favorite necks to play. I just love this guitar. And another note, it ships with 9 to 42 gauge strings. I typically play uh, 10 to 46. There's a few guitars I play nines on. This one feels like it was made for nines. The way it resonates and uh, sings, I, I think I'll stick with nines. Oh, and then one thing I meant to show you too, you probably saw it, but I didn't note it. Uh, string through, so uh, no trim of any sort. It's a true hardtail, and uh, I think that's part of what gives it such a great sound. So uh, play a little sound clip with the specs on the screen, give you a little idea of what it sounds like in a mix, and I'll go through some sound samples.
As you can probably tell, I absolutely love this guitar. If you're interested in picking up one for yourself, for someone else, it uh, retails for $729.99. I got it significantly cheaper than that as part of a Black Friday sale on Musician's Friend, which I did pay the full uh, price for in terms of the sale price. This is not product provided or anything like that. But uh, it's absolutely uh, worth every penny of that. It's uh, a player series guitar, so it's from Fender's Mexican Factory, and they make great guitars. And if you handed me this blindfolded, and told me it was uh, an American professional or performer series, I would believe you. It's a really high quality all around. No, in terms of uh, fit and finish and manufacturing, no problems with it at all. And it's simply a great guitar. Uh, other videos uh, with people who are more knowledgeable about them might be able to tell you the full history of the lead series, but in the last few years, Fender brought back the lead two and the lead three, which came about in the late seventies or early eighties in an attempt to uh, a Fender at the time to make something a little more contemporary. I believe that this lead three uh, guitar was only made in 1982, uh, which makes it near and dear to my heart. Uh, as I showed earlier, the classic uh, Lead 3 logo. And it, it's basically, in a lot of ways, a slimmed down Stratocaster in terms of the body. Still 25 and a half inch length scale. So that's the same. The body's just uh, slightly smaller. Again, it weighed uh, six pounds and 14 ounces, so really light guitar. And most of the samples I've seen uh, and the online stores that give the weights have been in the high six pound, low seven pound range, which is great. It's comfortable, uh, makes for, in my experience, a very resonant guitar too. The contour like a Strat here. Uh, like I pointed out earlier, the only thing about it is holding it like this. If you're trying to play it there, that's a reach because right there is where your hand hits. So it's not cut away as deeply as a Strat or a Tele, but overall the body is slimmer, very comfortable to play, very comfortable to hold. You know, I, I mentioned earlier in the video how much I love the neck and the fret work. Still, I think they're the most highly polished frets I've ever seen on a new guitar. And it just does what it's supposed to. In my opinion, a Fender with humbuckers uh, should still have the crispness and the articulation of a fender, but with a little extra oomph, uh, like a Gibson style guitar. And I think this absolutely does that. And you've heard numerous sound samples on here, so you can judge for yourself, but uh, I really love it. I think it's gonna become one of my primary guitars. And it feels fantastic, plays fantastic, sounds fantastic. I, I see no true downsides to this guitar. And again, Little details like these saddles just feel so great. I mean, I don't have any aftermarket saddles that I like better than these. So do yourself a favor if you're interested in this. Uh, pick one up, enjoy it, make some great music with it. I'm gonna play you out with one more sound sample and keep on rocking. <laughs>